Hello and welcome to season number three, episode number one. It is January 18th, 2021. Happy welcome birthday. to the new year. <laughs> welcome to the new year. Ooh, child, things are going to get easier. Things will get brighter. That's for certain. Someday, yeah, we'll put it together and we'll get it undone, which is quite ironic if you think about what's happening in two days from now. Welcome once again to my Southern exposure. When I say my Southern exposure, it doesn't mean from the waist down for me. It means me as well as the best co-host on the face of the planet, Rajan Arain Singh. Oh my goodness, flattery will get you everywhere, honey. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. And I want to welcome our, welcome our viewers back. We were on a little bit of a hiatus. And you know, it's so exciting coming back on Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday celebration. His birthday, I think, is actually on the 15th of January. But today we celebrate him. And because of him, many people are able to do the fabulous things they can do today, including myself. So, um, I, you know, happy Martin Luther King Jr. birthday. And uh, two days, he said it, the inauguration, honey. And it's going to be history, history because it's going to be the first woman vice president and the first black and Asian vice president. So there you go. She's representing a lot, honey. And um, I think that's just a wonderful step in equality. So welcome back. We have a juicy show for you. And get ready, honey. Put your seatbelts on because uh, Joseph is getting ready to push on the yes. That's for that's definitely for sure. Um, I think. Uh, I mean, I know I, 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 my personality might not necessarily taste so good, um, and it might be a little hard to digest. You might need to take some kind of medication or a shot of whiskey to go down. Oh, you're just me. like, you're just like a dill pickle. That's all. They just put some salt on that thing and some vinegar and it's, it goes down. They start sucking on it. <laughs> oh, by, I the know. Way, by the way, I love your yellow top, honey. Um, thank you. Uh, I, I don't deal well with compliments. You know that. I'm sorry. I know. Um, That's okay. But but uh, 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 um, 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 oh Jesus! Um, so I I'm gonna get you flustered. <laughs> you you did you did uh, 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 officially, uh, but that's beside the point. So let's talk about. Um, there's so much to go over. It's almost overwhelming, and for some of the people out there, they actually turn to us or turn to us for advice about what's going on in the world. And we've got a big show planned. I don't have everybody that I wanted to have on the show besides just me and you, but uh, Ted Douche. Deutsch. I'm sorry. Deutsch. I'm sorry. I, I'm Deutsch, is that it? Oh my God, I said it wrong again. Ted Deutsch. I, you know what? My intentions are good. I apologize. I and drink on that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Ted Deutsch. Yes. I am very apologetic to you That's as okay. another human being. I feel bad. I got an email, not from you, but from one of your workers. And Um, as soon as I saw the, saw the word Ted, mm -hmm. I instantly thought of Ted Cruz. <laughs> and you made an ass of yourself. 
I made more than an ass of myself, to be honest with you. Like, I didn't respond the way that I should have from that little generic email that I got as a person who's like patient or kind or understanding. I responded with, well, you're a horrible human being. You should be ashamed of yourself. Um, thinking that I was communicating with Ted Cruz, um, who should be removed from office from my perspective, immediately removed from office, helped propagate part of what happened um, and actually perpetuate this motion of the evil that has been done over the last, you know, four years, basically. Uh, so then I reviewed the email the next day that I received. And I was like, I'm so sorry. Cause I, it came back to me cause I copied myself in all my emails. I was like, Oh my God, Holy crap. That was actually the good guy. Like Ted Deutsch is the good guy. And I said, I'm so sorry that e that response that I sent to you is what I wanted to send to Ted Cruz. And I thought that you were him because I, as soon as I saw the word Ted, I was like, like ready to strangle somebody or something. It, it just as soon as I saw the word Ted, I'm like, are you kidding me? You're going to, you're going to do what you're planning on doing. And that was before the insurrection. So, um, long story short, I think Ted Deutsch and I are okay. Um, I officially invited him to be on the show. And if you're watching from home or if you know Ted Deutsch, please forgive me for saying his name incorrectly. Um, give me a little bit of a leeway with the um, confusion of the two Ted's. There's a good Ted and a bad Ted. So um, we got a good Ted. Thank you very much, Ted Deutsch, uh, for what you have done and what you do every single day. So that's my plea to apologize to you. And I emailed you that I would apologize. So And, and I had the pleasure of meeting uh, Ted Deutsch at the Pride Center at Equality Park in Wilton Manors a couple years ago. Very nice gentleman. And uh, yeah, so. so it would be nice to see him again on our show. That would be great. No, no, you, you can't just drop that little bomb on me without letting me know what's going on. So how did you well, meet I've him? I've met a lot of people. I've met Debbie Wasserman Schultz. I've met the mayor of Miami, Javier Suarez. I've met uh, a number of people, honey. <laughs> Anderson, well, Peter, well, Dr. Phil. <laughs> well, I mean, we, we already know about we already know about the big ones, but but okay. So listen, lady, <laughs> we've been friends for how many? How, it doesn't matter. We need to get Debbie Wasserman Schultz on the show. I love her. Every time I see her, you know, she's so nice. She always says hello and we usually say a few words to each other. Yeah, really great. But then Ted Deutsch, um, he's a really good guy. He's done really good things for everybody. Yeah. For a long time. It's not like he just like instantly became a good guy. He's been a good guy for a long time. And a lot of people didn't even know his name, it seems like to me. Ted Deutsch. <laughs> it's not the easiest name to say. <laughs> yeah, but mine isn't either, so I, I, I can't talk. No, I know. Okay, so, all right, so how about we focus this year, 2021, we're going to get things done. 
That, oh, that's my that's my phrase for the year. Oh, like 2021, it. we're going to get things done. 2021, we're going to get things done. I love it. That's, that's, that's we're going to get things done. We definitely are. That's for sure. Um, so, uh, Ted Deutsch, that's my formal apology for me sending the nasty email thinking that you were Ted Cruz, but I already sent the actual email. So this is just my public apology to you so that it's out there permanently um, online and for everybody to view. And I have no problem to apologize if I offend somebody unnecessarily that didn't need offending. And the ones that I offended that deserve it, they can suck it. <laughs> Meaning, you can suck your thumb. You can suck it like your thumb, like a little baby. <laughs> you can suck it like your thumb, like a little baby. All right, so there's some serious stuff going on, Raji. You know about this just as well as I do. Unfortunately, in Broward County, I should say, in the state of Florida, this is not off of yesterday's data. This is off of Friday's data. Um, 48,350 people were... Um, tested for COVID, 12,119 people uh, actually tested positive in the state of Florida. So you can do the math and you can figure it out. Basically, that turns into 25% positivity. So for the entire state, okay? In Broward County specifically, that equates into... 12.4% for Broward County. In Miami and Dade, it's 13.5%. In West Palm Beach, I really don't care anymore because um, uh, someone is there's this, there's this guy that's moving in illegally um, uh, from, you know, uh, who's a white supremacist um, and tried to create an insurrection in the United States of America. So I really don't care about Broward. I really don't care about West Palm Beach County um, because of that individual. But so I'm not even looking at their numbers for West Palm Beach. And it, it, it might sound crass for me to say it that way. And I'm using a little bit of humor. But the fact is, dude, seriously, just go away. Uh, but these numbers are ridiculous. And my projection that I shared with you, Raji, is that I anticipate we're going to probably get up to the 80 or 90 percent of infections okay. until it starts to come down. And I know that sounds scary and it sounds frightening and it, and it sounds like something that's unbelievable. But seriously, we're having 200 people a day die. We're having... 4,000 plus people a day die in the United States. We're having 200 people plus a day die in just Florida. So like where, do, when or where do people start to understand like how many, how many um, twin towers do we need to have fall on a day? We've had 10 or 15 just since the beginning of this year with the numbers 3,000 plus in the United States. So that means one twin tower for every single state. Well, 15 states or 16 states. We've had, once you're over that 3,500 mark, that's the equivalent of the, the twin towers falling down. And then I drive down Wilton Drive, no offense to the people who are trying to make money, go ahead and do it. But seriously, how important is it for your business to make money if you're putting the people that work for you at, at, in danger and also the people who are buying from you? Have people pull up, take a little bag, run it out to the car. That's the part where I have, I have a problem I'm supportive of our local community. I want our community to be able to survive, but we are not going to be able to survive if everyone is sick or dies. 
for the local LGBT community, they need to understand how serious this virus is. You are not going to get a free pass. It's a virus. It doesn't care. If you're white, black, Asian, American, Japanese, it does not care. It doesn't care if you're religious or not, if you believe in Buddha or Jesus or Hindu. It, it doesn't it doesn't make any difference. So my concern for the our local community is start to look at things more seriously because people are dying from this virus. Just because you don't see it on the news doesn't mean it's not happening because they're not showing the LGBTQ people that are dying. Raji, what do you got to say? Well, I was actually out on the drive on Saturday. Um, I hadn't been out actually walking on the drive since the whole pandemic started. But they were having an art fair, art little art, little art festival. It was only like about a couple blocks long, and there were a few like tables set up. Well, more than a few, but not that many um, of different uh, artists and their artwork. Um, and I have to say, like people that were walking for the most part were wearing their masks, so that was really good to see. Um, I had mine on too, um, but. What I noticed is the restaurants were pretty packed. And, you know, of course, those people at the table, they didn't have their mask on because, you know, when you get to the table, you take it off so you can eat and drink and all of that. So that kind of struck me. I was like, hmm, because I passed one place and oh my God, the place was packed. Okay. So I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work out at all. I, I, I don't know how that's going to work out at all, Raji, to be honest with you. And, and, and I understand the idea or the problem that a business owner has, just like myself. I've adjusted our business. Ours was an in-person business. It used to pick people up and take more than needed to go, do grocery shopping, do all these kind of things. So we had to change the way that we conduct our business. And I don't want people to put themselves at risk just to make 10 bucks or 20 bucks or whatever the thing is. Um, so the part that I have the problem with is PPP loans are available. It's not like there's a shortage to get money to pay to keep employees at this point. Now, now we got a new stimulus package that's coming out. Now we got a new stimulus package that's coming after that. As well, I'm then, really excited about that. I was like, "Wow!" I, I, I mean, I'll see it when I, when it's in my account and I see it, I'll believe it. But it's good to hear that it's, you know, they're working on it. So, well, well, I mean, the, the, the good thing about it, I think, Raji, is that we know that Joe, Joseph, I didn't know his name was Joseph, but I'm like, I was so excited to see it say Joseph. I'm like. I was so happy. I was like, that's a slam dunk. Now I know he's a good guy. Um, but yeah. with Joseph and Kamala, we know that both of these people, their entire lives have been about supporting and helping and honoring and doing the right thing. We're talking about decades of doing the right thing over and over and over again mm -hmm. fighting for the fighting for the underdog doing the right thing you know uh, uh, uh trying to peacefully make a display without violence without breaking through glass without killing people they've both been advocates for standing up for your voice and 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 showing a display peacefully but calmly yes you and i don't have to agree on everything we most most of the time you and i agree on most things but sometimes we we have a little divergence where you go one way and i go the other and other exactly. people do too i mean that's the way it's supposed to be you're su you're supposed to give me a little pushback i'm supposed to give you some pushback and then we're supposed to have somebody else giving some more pushback. We're not supposed to all think the same fucking thing. 
we're supposed to be able to communicate without breaking through doors and breaking through windows and hurting people and stealing and doing illegal things. So I love the idea that Joe, I should say Joseph, I love calling him Joseph now. So I love that Joseph R. Biden, which is interesting because my brother's name was Robert. So um, unfortunately he was murdered in my uh, birth mother's driveway um, many years ago. And I shared that story with you a long time ago, as well as the rest of our viewers. Um, so when I saw Joseph and then I saw the R, it reminded me of Joseph and Robert. Yeah. And then his name is Biden. So it just made me, it just made me all warm and fuzzy inside thinking about that he represents me just because of my name, but he's more, much more than that. And then Kamala, I don't know if you saw on the TV show over the weekend um, with, um, I can't remember her name. It was on CBS, the one of the sun, the, the sundial looking thing. Yeah, on Sunday morning, Sunday morning. I didn't see that one, but I saw the piece they did on her last night on CNN. It was um, from 10 p.m. Eastern to 11 p.m. Eastern, and they did a pretty nice piece on her. But I missed the Sunday morning one. The Sunday morning one was great. Mm -hmm. I didn't see the one that you saw, and I will definitely look to, to watch that one. But for you especially... I think that Kamala, identif I should say, I would think that Ka you would identify with Kamala. Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. Definitely. With her being half Indian, I'm half Indian. Yeah, definitely. Um, and and uh, that whole, you know, side, her father is like mixed with black and um, some other things. My mom is the same. She's mixed. So, yeah, definitely in that regard. I um I can relate to her, and um I like her. I mean, so far so good. I it's it's something though. I was talking to someone recently, and I swear that he's a Trump supporter, and he was. I was joking with him. I said, "Oh, I said next Wednesday." I said, "Is you they're swearing in your president?" He's like, he's not my president. He'll never be my president. Trump is my president. He'll always be my president. I'm like, really? Really? He's like, yeah. I said, well, I said, you know, and what about Kamala? And I was just like busting his chops, you know. And then he's like, Kamala, oh, she's the worst. She's the worst. And you're going to see how this country is going to go downhill. And I'm like, hello. Like, and, and, and as I stood there talking to him, I said, wow, it's all about, it's all relative. How you see things, how you perceive, how you interpret things. You know, he was like, um, you know, well, if Biden had really won the election, you know, he stole the election. Um, I mean, that stole it. It was uh, rigged. It was rigged. I would have probably uh, been happy. So I said, well, I said, I, no, he said, I would have probably supported him, but, you know, he didn't win uh, legitimately. So I said, well, wait a minute. I said, what about when Trump won? And they said the Russians helped with that. Oh, no, 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 that was fake. So I'm like, oh, so that was fake, but this is real. I'm like, you know what? And, and I didn't want to get into a debate with him, so I kind of dropped it. But it just made me think how things can be so relative and again it's all how people perceive you know i mean i think i mean it's it's not i think i know that it definitely is um it's definitely about perception uh it's it's one of those things that it's it's hypocritical from my perspective it's if okay so hillary did this Hillary did that, Obama did this, Obama did that. Um, so it's, it's one of those things where, how about we push all that shit aside and now we can focus on the real adults, 
There's only there are only two adults in the room at this point, besides me and you and other people. Um, uh, I mean, we're just I'm just I'm just a gay Puerto Rican with a little teeny tiny web show, um, <laughs> and you're just you're just you, uh, an author and a writer and an activist uh, who I'm helps everybody on the on the planet. <laughs> Exactly. So, but I mean, our little perspectives are quote unquote, very narrow. Um, but the fact is that I, I, I think it's hypocritical for people that keep pushing forward this false narrative of their fake leader. I can understand, I hate to say it, but I can understand Raji, what that guy said because I've never accepted um, the orange face monster as a president. I never have. So I can understand and I can appreciate that and I can respect that. Well, okay, so this is the thing. Um, Cause a lot of times like I'm the type of person when someone says something or they, they're standing for something and I don't really, that I really don't agree with. I try to like, analyze why might that person be looking at a particular thing the way they're looking at it. He is Israeli. He's from Israel. And 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 we all know that Trump and Israel are like like this. And so the Israeli people love Trump. So you know like after we finished talking and I thought about it after the fact I was like, oh yeah, he's Israeli. You know, that makes sense. He would love Trump, you know. So people have their reasons for why they, you know, like a certain thing. But, you know, for him to say that, oh, this country's going to go down in the go down the toilet, I was thinking on Wednesday, we're, we're finally coming out of the toilet. <laughs> okay, that's what I was thinking, you know. But anyway, yeah. yeah I, I agree with you completely. I mean, I, I think that... Huh? What went on at the Capitol last week in Washington, D.C. is absolutely hideous. It's horrible. It was horrific. It was an attack on the American democracy. And, and, and it goes deep. There's a lot of shit that, that a lot of people inside, inside people that I believe were behind that too. So, so yeah, so, you know, and, 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 and he fuels the fire. I don't care what anyone says. This man talks double talk. I call it double talk. For you to say, stand up in front of a group of your followers, your supporters and say, go to the Capitol. I'll march with you. And you know, in order to take back America, and I'm thinking, take back America? Shouldn't the Native Americans be saying that? Give us, give us America back, you know? I mean, come on, what are you talking about take back America? In order to take back America, you have to be strong. You have to exert strength. So basically what he said, let me break it down to you. He said in Morse code, read between the line code, go to the Capitol and kick ass, get violent. I mean, come on. I, and of course he's going to deny it because that's not literally what he said. But that whole thing of the double talk, read between the lines thing, he does it all the time, all the time. He has I, license to all of these hateful, uh, racist, white supremacist people in this country. You know, they're there, they've been there regardless, but him being in power, he has fueled them. He has given them, he has, he has made them feel emboldened and, you know, like, like they can be, you know, uh, um, loud and proud about their racism. Anyway. Girl, honey, child, things are gonna get easier. Ooh, child, things are going to get brighter. <laughs> things are going to get easier. Ooh, child, things will get brighter. Hey, ooh, 
job. <laughs> Seriously, things are going to get easier and brighter, but we have to go through this dark point. That's the part that's hard. That's the part that's hard is we got to go through this dark point and we don't know when that is going to end. And I personally don't believe that it will ever end considering that we're talking about since the 16, 1700s that we've been dealing with race as a weapon, which it has been our entire existence of the United States. I mean, seriously, there's, you, you, you can't not, you can't not get it through your head unless you're dumber than a box of rocks. I mean, seriously, it was, um, I think 24 white guys in a room in 1767 that wrote the constitution and it was all white men. They didn't even acknowledge women or people of color as human beings. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me tell you, I've been watching on Netflix the documentary the social dilemma and them talking about how you know with the whole internet and and um social media how uh through social media they literally um can persuade people to do certain things so and also they were talking about this guy from google and what they did they interviewed former employees of google and Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And a lot of these people were like saying that, you know, when when you look at social media, you think, oh my God, this is great. We're bringing the world together. And, you know, we're helping people find each other and we're saving lives because we were able to make it so that someone was able to find the kidney that they needed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But then they were saying on the flip side of it, the control and how people are so addicted to social media and it's strategically done that way. It's a, I recommend the documentary, it's excellent. The one guy from Google said, right now, he was like at Google, there's 40 white men, 40 white men from, the, from age 20 to 35, and they are influencing 2 billion people. 40 white, Amer 40 white American men, um, age 20 to 35, that are influencing 2 billion people. And he said that what they do, I don't know if it was him, it was, I think it was another person, but this other person said, you, everything you do online, everything is monitored everything they said they even count the seconds of how long you look at a picture so like say you're scrolling and you keep scrolling and then you see something that attracts you so you stop and you look at it based on how long you stop and look at that picture it gives them the information as to oh we know what this person is attracted to Oh, we know what this person probably likes. And then you'll notice in your thread, you'll start to get more of it, more of it. So it was very- Well, I mean, I, 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 I'm gonna say this, just to add some humor to the situation. I think there's a lot of threads that have you in them. <laughs> you got that right, honey. You got that right. Well, see, this is this is the this is the key to life. One of the important keys of life: balance. So, anything you do, make sure that you have a balance to it. I go on my social media because it's very necessary based on who I am and what I do. But I don't stay on it all day. I get on in the morning. I post. I check my emails i do that then i'm then i go off of it and then maybe in the evening i might check it again but 
I don't let it, I try not to let it um, become obsessed with it. That's what I'm trying to say. But balance goes for everything, even food. You can eat yourself to death. We all need to eat to live, right? To nourish our bodies. But people can overeat and eat themselves to death. Water is excellent, but you can you can drink too much. You can you can literally drown if you drink too much water. So you know, balance, balance. That that is the key. I don't. I'm not against social media. I think it's a fabulous thing. It can be a wonderful tool for people. But I think we need to go in and deal with it with our eyes open. Like when I say our eyes open, I mean like fully conscious like aware of what's going on and um yeah so you see i agree with you sure? I, I i agree i agree with you completely you made me pull one of my ears out oh, oh my goodness God. gracious um i pulled back hair. i pulled back so quickly i i pulled back so quickly thinking i was pulling my own hair out um <laughs> Uh, but no, this is this uh, this it, it's 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 anchored in. It's not going nowhere. Um, but I agree with you completely. The part that's that I think is a good part of conversation is the realization about social media. Um, I have not seen I have not seen that movie yet. I tried to pull it up last night, and to be honest with you, um, I had one or two many of these so as it was pulling up i fell asleep i had one or two many drinks last night so as i was trying to watch <clears throat> the social experiment um it i fell asleep sorry uh but i know and understand what it's about and i will be watching it and i will definitely talk about it along with you um because we can actually delve into that story uh, together because there's a lot to talk about because part of what we're doing is, it's not a social experiment. What we do is, I think it's a social enlightenment, what we do. We're enlightening. We're telling people about things that might not be comfortable and the good and the bad um, and bringing up conversations that other people kind of just let peter out they don't they don't want to continue with the story because it's uncomfortable because they're not getting advertising dollars we don't have that problem with us with our show we that's not an issue granted if you do want to advertise with us you are more than welcome to you can contact me directly advertise at my Southern Exposure dot site will be more than help happy to help you advertise. I don't want to be flippant or look down at getting some money so that we can both have more fabulous lives and also help other people. But the fact is like mainstream media um, is controlled by people who are dictating to the people who work for them, they tell them what they can say. They can't say this. They gotta, you have to sign a, con I mean, I know this, you have to sign a contract. If you change your hair color, if you're working for a big mainstream media uniform company, if you change your hair color, you change your body weight, if you get pregnant, it, it, what whatever you do, if you change your look, quote unquote, they're marketing you, mainstream media is marketing you as you are. You don't have control of you. Like Katie Couric had to look like Katie Couric until she decided to get out of that fucking tunnel. I mean, I just saw, I just saw a really good piece about her. Uh, I shouldn't say a piece, but I saw a video about her and she kind of like let her hair down. And it was nice to see Katie as Katie, mm -hmm. she's got her own shit now. She don't. She don't need no money from you. Katie's got her own money, which I think that's freaking wonderful. Just like me, just like Raji. I mean, both of us. You got your own shit. I got my own shit. 
no one's going to tell me what I can and cannot say. No one's going to tell you what you can or cannot say. If they don't like it, they can fucking suck it. <laughs> oh, boy, that suck thing, boy. I tell you, there you That's, go. I have, to, I, I have to have a catchphrase, yes, I guess. Suck it, honey. <laughs> they can suck it. You can suck it. Like a little baby. If they don't like what I'm saying, they can suck it like a little baby because they don't want to hear the truth. Yeah. That's what it is. Actually, there's another version of it that only you know about what I actually mean. There's a double entendre here. When I say suck it, there's two different things that I'm saying. So the perverted people know what I'm actually saying, but... I'm using the G version of suck it like a little baby. Uh, but the fact is, like, most people do not have this opportunity to be able to do what we're doing. It, what we're doing is not something that we're doing because we need to make money off of what we're doing. We're doing it out of the, the drive inside of us to help people be able to have a voice that have never had a voice before. And we're not letting that get adulterated. We're not going to let somebody pay, oh, here's X amount of dollars because I need you to say this and this and this and this and this. Okay, if you want to pay something, fine. I'm going to look at you. I'm going to pull up your company. I'm going to look and see who you invest in. I'm going to see what money came in from you. I'm going to look and see where you're, where you're spending money before I have anything to do with it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to accept the check just because you're going to give me 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40, whatever the dollar amount is. I don't fucking care. I do not care. If you're a bad person, whether you're a Democrat, Republican, independent, Episcopalian, Egyptian, I don't care who the fuck you are. It's not going to happen. But I mean, we're in a we're in a different situation though, Raji. You know that. Oh yeah. We don't have the same situation that other people do. And the part that's more infuriating for me Mm, did I lose you? <laughs> so that's like, why did it take so long? And now Joe's already got shit already lined up. Mm-hmm. Ready to go. What do, you, what do you think about that, though, Raji? Like, why did it take so long for them to get stuff in order? And Turtle Mitch, I call him Turtle Mitch because he looks like a turtle with the, the multiple neck you know, the length of the neck. Um, And he usually just disappears in his shell. Um, But Turtle Mitch had been blocking shit for a long time. And then at the end, oh, no problem. Let's get such and such moved in to uh, the new appointment. But then we, we can't reconvene to do the second impeachment and people are losing that idea of the importance of that second impeachment. The importance of the second impeachment is that he can never run for office again, period. And it sets a precedence. If you do illegal shit long enough, you can't do any more damage. What do you think about what I just said? I just went through like 10 topics, so I don't know which one you're going to pick at first. <laughs> Even if you're um, the president, exactly, because it's almost like I think there's something about being president that kind of gives you like a, um, a clearance or a pass, for lack of a better phrase or word. Um, and I think that he, he, basically felt like he could do whatever and get away with it because he's president. 
So, um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a, one of those things. And I'll tell you, I, I, uh, I think, you know, at this point, I question like, really, like, you know, he's, he's gone in like less than two days. And, but I know it's, it's about principle. It's about having it where he won't have to, uh, he won't be able to run again. Uh, and um, that sort of thing. Now, one thing, uh, question that came up in my mind, because they were talking about uh, if he's convicted, they would pull all his benefits, like he wouldn't be able to get a pension, he wouldn't be able to, he wouldn't have secret service um, protection. Um, now, what, 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 but what worries me about that? That might be a security breach for us as Americans, because remember now, he's been president for four years. He'd be a target without, um, without any secret service. Who's to say someone doesn't take him and, you know, kidnap him or whatever and try to, like, get information out of him, like top secret information about this country by torturing him or whatever? I mean, my mind was running a little bit with that, but I was thinking, like, the Secret Service protection, I don't know about pulling that. Like, that might be beneficial for us as a country to have him protected from you know, people that are in other places that might want to get a hold of them to do something like that. But um, that, that's just an idea that came to my mind. But yeah, as far as impeaching him or ha having him convicted and, and having it so he doesn't run again, I, I that would be wonderful as far as I'm concerned. And um, I, I question myself, I question though, what, do, what will he do? Like, I wonder what his game plan is. Because I always try to like to get, I, I always like to get into people's minds. And I wonder, and I was even saying, like, he has 70 million followers. That's a lot of people still. Um, you know, even though Facebook blocked him, all the other places, Twitter blocked him, all the other internet, internet places, I think Instagram blocked him. Um, but I said, who's to say he can't buy a server from Russia? <laughs> Right, because you know, if you get a server in another country, America can't do nothing. They, you know, they don't have jurisdiction over that server, and then he start his own thing on, you know, that server. Do you know, start his own social media thing? So, you know, hey, he, who knows? Knowing him as um, as uh, arrogant as he is, I wouldn't be surprised if he starts his own party. The Trump Party, not Republican, not Democrat, not Independent, the specific party of Trump. <laughs> Actually, the, the, the funny part about what you just said is um, at the end of what you just said is that that was already referenced already publicly. So that's the scary part. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a throwback. I was trying to find the paperwork over here. I got a whole bunch of paperwork printed off for the show. And um, I only have like one piece of paper um, that I can actually read uh, about something that is important to me as well as probably the viewers at home. And please do not forget, if you're watching the show for the first time, if you want to get in contact with Raji, you can directly. That's Raji at mysouthernexposure.site. That's Raji at mysouthernexposure.site. If you want to get a hold of me, Joseph at mysouthernexposure.site. And if you're interested in advertising and having a smart ass like me, um, send your message across the world and a very beautiful, vivacious, <laughs> trans activist, author, writer, co-host of two shows and, and spiritualist reality TV personality. <laughs> and reality tv personality um do not forget to contact her directly that's raji at my southern exposure that site as well all joking aside um i but i i had to do that little selfish plug um so 
if you're looking for a job, you can work from home and also as well. You can work at my Southern Exposure to that site as well. Uh, pointing back to what we were just talking about, the part that I have the problem with about this whole situation is that this problem is not going to go away on January 20th. This problem has been around ever since the beginning of the founding fathers who created the constitution. So this isn't something that's going to go away away. I should say it's not going to go away immediately. It's, it's going to take decades, hundreds of years, possibly. It took 300 years to get up to this freaking hot mess. So I'm guessing it's going to take at least 600 years to back down from it. But I think because of Kamala Harris being sworn in, it's the first swipe against the white right kind of thing. I know it sounds kind of silly to say it that way, but it's the first, it's the first woman. That's good. And she just happens to be multicultural. So we got we got a threefer. We got African American, well, multicultural. I don't know exactly her genealogy, but I it's I think Haitian and something else also as well. No, it's and then Asian and um, it's and then she's got the Indian as well. Um, and her mom uh, was married to the guy and then they got divorced and then she took care of the kids and all that kind of stuff. So she brought the girls up and they, 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 they went to, um, that fancy school. I can't remember the name of it. Oh, what was that name of that school? I forgot the name of that school. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. But it's a fancy school. It's a fancy school. It's a fancy school. Um, I'll remember it. Uh, shortly, but the fact is, is that, you know, she grew up in this situation with constant pressure and constant uh, uh, unacceptance, just the same as you and me, her entire lives have been that. So the idea that she is in a position where she can help influence other people um, more than she's already done is an absolute blessing and i gotta give props to joe joseph r biden i gotta give props to him buddy you're you're doing a good thing seriously joseph r biden you're you're the best guy i've ever met i've never met you in person but i'm just saying you're the best guy i've ever met i hate your hairy shoulder and i hate that little thing that sticks out of the one eyebrow it drives me freaking crazy so if you can possibly have someone fix that i'm just saying i mean i'm just being real like you're the president of the united states so can you at least shave the shoulder before they put the injection in because that would be nice i mean instead of having like these fibers hanging out i was and then wondering instead what you were talking about because i'm like how do you even know how his shoulder looks? I see what you're saying when he was getting the shot. He got the shot and he's got like some gigantic carriage. And you know what? I've got some little spots from, from like skin stuff that I got going on, but I'm not the president. Like fix your shit, dude. I mean, and then he's got these crazy eyebrow hairs hanging out. Like, well, like. You know what though? You know what? Like with all due respect, he's a regular guy. Guys don't he think is a regular guy, but I'm just saying, like, guys don't think about that shit. Get it well, get well, it well I'm just saying, yeah, because the this thing is, is like a regular guy isn't gonna think about, oh my god, let me let me shave my shoulder so it's nice and smooth. You know, all I'm saying <laughs> is that Mrs. Biden, all I'm saying, Mrs. Yeah, Biden, you've done a great job. I, I, I love you, Joseph R. Biden. I love you, Mrs. Biden. But can can you help him with the hygiene part just temporarily? Just clean him up a little bit. Um, I'm just saying that's just this that's just my perspective. I mean, I'm not I don't have the net worth that you do. 
So just, I'm just saying, I love you. Just clean it up a little bit. Just a little, I can, I can send you a oh, big okay. razor. Okay, Granted, you won't see his shoulder anymore. That was a one-time deal with the ejection. Maybe he can he can fix this thing because you'll be seeing we'll be seeing his face for the next few years. So that that might yeah yeah. But He's I, got. Have you noticed that little crazy eyebrow hair that sticks out? No, I haven't. I, I never really paid attention. To oh my god! Every single video. He's got this crazy wild hair that's like <laughs> sticking out. And I absolutely love and adore you, Joseph R. Biden. So let's see. So I, I just got a little side tangent there. I'm sorry for being so kind of crazy. Um, but I'm just like, that's just me. Can't help it. So I do want to talk about something that Joseph R. Biden believes in, which is health care. That's one of the top five things that they're going to be talking about in the first 10 days. Um, I have a personal story to share. You might have one to share also as well, but I'm going to share a story about someone that I know and love. We don't need to say who they are. We don't need to say how I know them, but I am going to share, share the story. So, a female that I know who is 45 years old has insurance through Aetna, which is for the most part, a pretty well-known insurance company across the entire country. And I think most people think about Aetna as a good insurance company in general. So like got Aetna, you know, you got um, a lot of other insurance companies out there that, but Aetna is a really good one. And this individual who happens to be a female that's 45 years old, her doctor suggested that she would get a colonoscopy. And it was because of her family's um, predisposition to have colon cancer. Not giving too much information out because of HIPAA stuff, okay? I'm just giving general terms. But what ended up happening is the colonoscopy was not covered because the person was 45 years old instead of 50. You and I discussed this, Raji, earlier today on the phone, and you can share your perspective if you want to. I'm not saying that you have to. Um, and I have my perspective on it also as well that I will definitely share. But the fact of the matter is, if you, things need to change. They have to change. If they don't change, then people can't stop things before they happen and are bleeding in their bathroom with blood coming out of their butthole. I know it sounds crass to say it that way, but that's what happened to me. So if you know that there's a problem, and I'll, I I'm mean, sorry. I don't mean to laugh, but the way you said it. Okay, go ahead. But it's, but it's true. I, it, it's, I, I can't candy coat the shit. No pun intended. I mean, seriously, um, but I mean, if someone who's 45 wants to get or needs to get the colonoscopy done and it helps them not have a problem later, and the difference is if you're 45, it's not covered, and if you're 50, it is covered, are you fucking kidding me? What do you think about that, Raji? Well, okay. Okay. Um... Yeah, I totally get what you're saying. The person's trying to be proactive. Their doctor's trying to be proactive. You would think the insurance company would be happy about that and would go ahead and cover it. But knowing, <laughs> knowing how pharmaceutical is, insurance is, a lot of the industries that are driven by money, and, uh, you know, knowing how that can be, it doesn't surprise me 
that they would not approve it. I personally had my colonoscopy, the first one, I was 49. Uh, but I was a month away from my 50th birthday. So when the doctor said, oh, you know, you should probably go ahead and get your colonoscopy. I said, the first thing I asked him was, well, wait a minute, doesn't the insurance cover when you're 50 and above? I said, and he's like, yeah, that's how it is. But because you're so close to your 50th birthday, they'll, they will pay for it. So I asked, I did ask about it, but, um, it doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me. A lot of the industry, it's a business. It's it's money making. They and of course they're going to set their their um their boundaries. You know, because I guess they don't want everyone running for colonoscopies either. You know, it's like it's a, that's another thing too. So I'm kind of I understand what you're saying, and I agree to it to a certain point. But I just say. People need to be proactive and be their own advocates. Like, you know, if your doctor is saying, hey, you're 45 years old and you should have a colonoscopy research, call your insurance company on your own. You know, I know it's a pain in the ass, but, you know, do it. Do it to find out because then you can decide whether you're going to do it or not, knowing the situation, not be surprised after you have your colonoscopy and then you get a big bill for it, you know? So anyway. I, I, I completely understand what you're saying, but the fact of the matter that I have the problem with is, okay, I got two different stories. So I have one for my partner and I have one for me. So I'm going to, I'm just going to break it down in two different ways and then directly affect the other one that just happens to be someone who I absolutely love and have known and adored for, since I was 20 years old. She's a, one of my girlfriends. Wow. Um, so, but the fact is you, you, it's kind of like, it's kind of like going to get an oil change. Okay. Let's say you go to get an oil change. It's 1995 mm -hmm. or whatever it is. And then you get the oil change done, but then they're like, Oh, by the way, your brakes had to be done. You had to have your discs serviced and this and that and the other. So it was 695. It's, you know, 619.95. Let's just use that as like a, a, a generic example. You don't tell somebody about the dollar amount after it's done. That's my point. Well, yeah, no, no, I get it. But that's kind of different because you're going into a store to patronize the store. That's a little different. See, with the health insurance, you know, a lot of that stuff is done through your like you go to the doctors, they schedule you for the colonoscopy, all that insurance shit, you don't even really deal with it. They're running the paperwork to the insurance company and doing that stuff kind of behind the scenes. So it's a little different um, I, I, as opposed to like walking into a business and saying, okay, I want an oil change. How much is, gonna, is it going to be? And, you know, getting paying for the oil change based on what they say. So it's, I think what it is is because you're not as hands on as the purse as the um, the patron or the person that's getting the particular procedure, the patient. Um, you're not as hands on with the, the the medical insurance part as opposed to like if you're driving your car to a to a, 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 a mechanics, you're you're right there and you're dealing with the transaction right there. So I think that's what, what the difference is. Okay, but this is my question for you. If you go in and you think that everything's approved, you get the work done, and then a month or two months later, then you get a bill. Oh, I would be upset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I go in based on them telling me that it's covered and then it's not covered, oh, hell yeah. 
Hell yeah. But if I go in and I didn't do my homework and I didn't know whether they covered it or not, I'll still be upset, but I can't be that mad because of the fact that I did not, I did not verify and check it out. So, yeah. Okay, so this is my question then. The next question that I is, um, so when somebody who has a doctor and their doctor tells them that this is covered, well, they suggest or refer, let's say refer, they refer somebody to have something done. Your doctor that is already on the books, you're good to go. And they refer you to have something done. And then you find out later that it's not covered after you already booked it and you plan for it. And then after that, then you get a bill. It's like a multi-step process. Why would or why should or how can a doctor suggest or, or, or prescribe something to be done legally if they know it can't be done? Because bottom line is it can be done. Doctors aren't worried about cost. They're thinking about the procedure and that patient getting it. Meaning like he wasn't thinking about, oh, is this covered? Oh, I don't know, should I do it? No, he's not thinking about that. That's not his lane. The patient is the one that has to think about that. Because doctors are, their thing is, they're just going based on the medical situation, what they think based on their expertise a patient should have, they're not gonna worry about, well, I, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't recommend it to her to have it done because it might not be covered by her insurance. They're not gonna worry about that. That's something the patient has to, has to be worried about. But by, the same to but, but, but by the same token though, Raji, you can, you can accept the idea that the pharmaceutical reps come in and then they push drugs onto people, whether they need them or not. The doctors do. Oh, definitely, definitely, yeah. So then how can it work one way, but not the other? No, because this is the thing, even with the drugs, right? They do the same thing. They push it on you. They don't care whether your their your insurance covers it or not. They're pushing the drugs. What I'm trying to say is the doctor is not concerned about how you're paying for the bill. He's concerned with his motivation of you having the procedure or you taking this medicine for whatever reason. That's my point. Like it, no, I, it, it's the same thing. No, I understand what you're saying, but my, my question is with the Hippocratic Oath. Mm -hmm. The Hippocratic Oath is to do what needs to be done to help a person survive, basically, no matter of what the cost is either way. So it is uh, uh, my question is, do you think that doctors are actually upholding the Hippocratic Oath and just suggesting to people what what needs to be done, or this is a very direct question, or do you think that they're actually suggesting procedures to people that are not necessary and not telling them about things it depends, on purpose? It depends on the doctor. It's case by case. You know, you can't do it. That is a question you can't answer, given a blanket answer for. It would be case by case depending on the actions of that particular doctor, then I would be able to answer that question. Because every I mean, doctor all, is different. No, that, I mean, that makes perfect sense. I mean, and, and, and uh, um, uh, in reference to doctors, we just recently had one in Florida, unfortunately, um, who was a very well-known, respected doctor um, who unfortunately took advantage of children um, and had pornographic images um, on their 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 computers. Um, it, it's one of those things where it, it's kind of frustrating for me, just like you. I mean, especially you, 
you know what it's like to have a medical procedure done and it wasn't done properly. The part that's very frustrating for me is the idea like, like your doctor tells you you should get something done. It happened to my partner. You need to get your cataract surgery done. I'll, I'm not going to. I'm not going to give specifics about it, but everyone knows my name. Everyone knows who I am. I really don't fucking care if you like it or not. So if you don't like it, just suck it. <laughs> so, um, but the fact is that that um, it was determined that he needed to have cataract surgery done, and um, it took years. I mean, it took multiple years to get to this. And he basically was pretty much incapable of doing anything because he could not see. It, 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 was, it was a big deal, okay? So, um, but the fact is, is that they, they finally pushed through the quote unquote um, recommendation referral to get cataract surgery done. And then it got done, but it was, it went, it, it took a long time. I'm, I'm, I'm downplaying this just to make it a simple short story, but it, it, it took a long time. And then we got down to like getting the eyes, the eye, one eye fixed. And um, then we, we had the appointment, everything was ready to go. And we're talking about a day or two before this scheduled appointment. Oh, there's a problem. It's not covered. It went from it being booked, scheduled, planning for it to come show up. And then, oh, wait, no, you, you can't have it done. We have to figure out what's going on. And then I had to rattle some chains and, to be honest with you, kind of be a dick. I mean, Sometimes I can't be nice, even though I want to be nice. And you know that, that my, my intentions are good as a human being. I care about people and I love and I want to help do whatever I can. And especially for people that I know and love personally, I want to help them. And I want to help everybody on the face of the planet. But there's only so much that I can do. But they changed it from, from it being approved to being scheduled to not being approved. And then they ended up fixing his one eye. But then when it came to do the second eye, then they changed it. They couldn't do the second eye. So the part that I have the problem with, with this whole insurance thing, or the whole what's covered and what's not covered. I mean, they covered them shoving up that big old black tube with the magnifying glass up my ass, getting my colonoscopy. I mean, it sounds crass to say it that way, but it's true. I had to have a colonoscopy done. I had my insurance and I was, okay, so now I'm 47. So it was when I was 37 years old, I was 37 years old and I had my insurance. It wasn't Aetna, it was another insurance provider. I can't even remember who it was through. Apparently maybe it, I was paying more money for the insurance company, possibly. But the fact of the matter is that I was still well under that 50 year mark. I mean, I was bleeding out in my bathroom with blood on the floor and poop all around me to not to, I'm not going to candy coat the shit. I mean, seriously. Yeah, you sure didn't. <laughs> okay. We get the picture. So I'm just saying, so uh, they took me. And they took me to the hospital. I had to call 911. I could barely even breathe or even move. They picked me up. They took me to the hospital. They did what they had to do. They did every exam and every single thing that they could do. And they shoved that big old black tube up my butt. But that was covered. But then someone who's 45 years old can't get it done because they're not 50. I mean, especially if someone already has a family history that's that that dictates that they could have it just like a pap smear just like a mammogram and actually we've had this happen multiple times here in florida you know this down here in florida we've had multiple people be able 
it have had problems with that. What do you think, Raji, about the additional things? Well, I mean, you know what? This is like beating a dead horse, Joseph. It's this is the problem with the insurance companies. It's been this way forever. It's 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 just one of those things where, you know, some things are covered, some things are not. It depends on the situation and you know the circumstances and the insurance company or what what kind of insurance you have. I mean, there's so many things that play into it. I think. I, Unfortunately, it boils down to, you know what I think? We should have universal health care. We wouldn't be even having all of this shit, okay? But the bottom line is we don't. We don't. And so it's beating a dead horse. I mean, what more can I say about this? It, 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 it's one of those things. I, don't, I feel bad for that friend of yours, and they should have technically paid for it, but we know the nature of the beast. I mean, unless you've been under a rock your whole life. If you're living as an, a functioning adult, you know the nature of the beast when it comes to insurances here in this country. And it, well, I, yeah. I, I, agree, I agree with you completely, but I just wanted to bring up the topic so we could discuss it. And I think that us talking about it so candidly, like we do on a regular basis, I think it might reach other people in their homes and it might get through to the people who are able to change things well, and that, i'm gonna uh, that would be lovely uh, and and you know and like i said maybe one day we will have universal health care i don't know what is why american people we cannot wrap our minds about around universal health care there's countries in the world that have it and they're doing quite well they're not falling apart and not and and and, and not becoming um, uh, scattered and, and not being a country anymore. I mean, there's so many countries that have it. Canada has it. Uh, England has it. I mean, come on. You don't see these countries coming to an end. So I don't I, I don't I don't get it. I, I I know again it's all about capitalism and money driven and the so-called people wanting to say, well, you know, I want to be able to have a private doctor and pay and have the best of care. Well, guess what? We can have universal health care. And if you still want to pay to go to a special private doctor, then by, by all means, do it. But for people in this country that can't afford it, then at least, you know, people know that they're covered. And they don't have to worry about whether a colonoscopy is going to go through at 45 years old or 48 years old or whether a pap smear is. I mean, you know, it's just, it's ridiculous. We're talking about people's health, all right, and well being. So, anyway. No, I, I completely agree with you. And the other thing is, I, I, I talked to you about it. I didn't realize we were going to segue into this, but. Um, cause I had a whole bunch of other things planned that were more fun. Um, but, uh, I do want to talk about, because we're talking about insurance, health insurance, but I do want to talk about car insurance. You and I had this conversation and, um, there's, there, there's a lot of stuff with car insurance and, and your car warranty and all this bullshit that's going on out there. Uh, my phone rings probably five times a day with the, I'm calling you about your car insurance. Uh, no, I'm calling you about your car warranty crap. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Seriously. Oh, yeah. I, I don't need it. I don't need no car warranty thing. I understand that it's like a scam call. So it's, it's kind of this, this, this topic that I'm bringing up is about car insurance, but then also scam phone calling. So I have to, I have to ask, the viewers at home to be patient and if you're mad at me you can contact me directly if you don't like what i'm talking about or you don't like my cursing it's joseph at my southern exposure that site if you liked what i've been talking about that's joseph at my southern exposure that site clearly if you think that raji is the most beautiful person you've ever seen you can contact her at raji at my southern exposure that site. And if you're interested in advertising, that's advertise at my southern exposure that site. And then if you're interested in working, 
it's work at mysunexposure.site as well. That's my little self selfish plug for all of our emails because um, we're getting close to the end of the show. I didn't realize that we're almost two hours into it. Uh, it's 4.48 p.m. This show flew by so quickly. We got a lot more coming up. And I also want to say thank you to more than 80,000. I think we're up to 90,000 almost. Wow. Um, total views from the beginning of this little teeny tiny podcast show that we started um, since I we've been locked in. And I want to make an extra special thank you to you, Raji, that you've been so supportive. No, you've been so supportive and you've been... You've been so so helpful, and you've been so incisive, and 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 you you give you give every single bit of your soul to every single show that we have together. And I know we've known each other for a long time, but we've only been doing this for a short time. And I want to say thank you. I really truly want to say thank you. I don't know. I can't give it the hugs like we used to do. I know I, I can't do it, but I mean, I really, I, I love you so much. And I, I never knew that I could have a friend besides my partner like this. And it's a true blessing. It really oh, is a true blessing. My goodness. I mean, I didn't expect all of this. Thank you so much. No, but it, but it's, it, it's, it's, it's true. So I, it's so nice to be appreciated. I'll, I'll say that. And it's so nice to know that there's people in the world that can see my love and and receive it and see my light because there's quite a few that don't <laughs> i'll just leave it at that but no it's great to know and hey aren't we gonna do the half the glass half full instead of half empty yeah absolutely we are doing the glass half full that's for freaking short okay so the glass I am focusing on all my wonderful supporters around the world. So. Absolutely. So we're gonna we're gonna keep helping raise all the boats that are in the dirt up to water level. Um, on January twentieth, everything will start to change for us officially, um, and the other parts. Uh, that's important is that you and me and other people are out there doing a lot of good things to help other people that need it. So we help give them a voice because a lot of people don't have the same accessibility that we do. So um, I got a little side tangent there. I can't even remember what I started talking about, to be honest with you. So it must not be that important. I know that it was important. Um, if you want to redirect me, please go ahead and do it. Uh, yeah. But the, I, guess, the, the, I just wanted to say um, today on the view, I was watching the view earlier and um, they had a, a, a senator. She's new. I think it's a, I think she's a senator. Anyway, African-American woman, fabulous. And I can't remember her name now. But um, she spoke and she literally called uh, President Trump. Uh, you know, a, a, basically a racist and a um, white supremacist president. And, uh, you know, she got a lot of flack on the, the floor of the um, Senate for that. And um, she was, you know, basically saying that her first day that she went to the Congress, which was like on the 6th, I think when everything happened, um, that was the, for her first day. Um, since she had been recently been elected, she had a Brianna Taylor mask on. You know how they were wearing masks? Well, on her mask, it said Brianna Taylor. And she said a number, quite a number of people came up to her and said, hello, Brianna. They thought it was her name. And she's like, she, she, everyone she said that did that, she explained, no, I'm not Brianna. Brianna Taylor, you know, she's so at the end, after like so many people had done it, she she really was angry because she said, these are our lawmakers, people that are supposed to be, you know, up on what's going on in our country. And you don't know who Brianna Taylor is, you know, and so 
And she said, it wasn't like one or two people, it was quite a number of people. So anyway, I just, I just thought I would bring that up. You know, uh, uh, there's so much going on. And I tell you, we, this whole thing of take back America, the Native Americans are the only people that can say that. And, you know, I think what's happening is these white racist supremacist people, white supremacist people, they're, they're fearful because America is definitely changing and it doesn't look like it used to look. And, um, you know, I forgot what year they said, but within the next like 10 years, white people will not be the majority in this country. It will be Latino people. So, you know, uh, and I think that that's really scary for a lot of them because they're so used to being, you know, in power and, you know, on top, for lack of a better phrase. So anyway, um, hopefully, you know, when it's all said and done, we are moving forward in equality and equity for all people. Like, why can't everyone have that? Like, why does it have to be one group that's over another group? Like, why can't we all just why can't we all just get along in the in the names in the in the uh, the words of Rodney King, God rest his soul? But no, I'm just saying, you know. And and so, um, on that note, I just want to say before, because I know we're going to end soon. Uh, I recommend another documentary on Netflix. It's called Surviving Death, and it, it's uh, I haven't finished the whole thing, but it's so good. And uh, they interview people that have had near death experiences, and it's just so interesting to me. And I, and you know, it's funny. I, I shared with a number of people today, my friends and family. So one of my friends was like, "Oh well, you know, sis, I try not to um, something about I, I, lo I look at that stuff, but you know, I don't really go around thinking about death." And I said, "Well, I don't either. You know, I'm about living. I don't go around every day thinking about death." But the bottom line is we all have to die. Like one day everyone will have that day where the, it will be their last day. And I'm the type of person I like to kind of prepare. <laughs> I don't know if I'm subconsciously preparing myself. I mean, it could be 20 years from now, 30 years from now, it could be tomorrow. I mean, who knows? But I'm just saying, um, I you know, that's, the only thing we have to do in life is die, okay? And so, so my thing is, uh, literally, like that's the only thing we really, really have to do. But my thing is, is like nurture your soul, like take time to connect with that whole thing. Cause we feed ourselves, we, we stimulate our brains, we whack off, no, <laughs> let me, I'll play it, I'll play it. Um, but you know, also take time out to nurture your soul because it's the only thing that's eternal. That's the only thing about us that that is eternal. Everything else rots. So anyway, that's it. I just you 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 threw it over to me. I had a mouthful. So anyway, well, I'm I'm not surprised about that because I I mean I recently heard a story about you jumping out of a window. So that was quite <laughs> that was quite funny. Um, I'll share. I'll share. I'll share my story about jumping out a window um, later. Another that could be its own separate episode. I think. You know, I was um, for the name of the thing, but I can't find it. All right, I think it's. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure you'll. I, I'm certain that you'll find it. That's for sure. Um, and you know, this is what happens when when your hair starts to dry. Um, you end up with this with this big old gigantic curl that you can't calm down and I keep yeah. flipping it back. Um, but uh, all joking I, aside. I mean, do you, I don't know. Do you want to say that for next show? Why we jumped out the windows? I don't have no problem sharing. You want to I'm fine. I mean, you already, you already did your post. You already did your post about jumping out the window. Um, I, I don't I, have any. You know what? I think you know what? Why not? Let's that'll that'll be a good way to end the show, <laughs> on something like that. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. Um, you had a posting earlier today, mm -hmm. sharing your story about jumping out a window because of a 
Trist. Uh, let's, let's, <laughs> let's, let's call it that. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, everyone who knows you already has probably seen the video because it was on social media already. Okay, let me, let me summarize real quick. Okay, so basically, yes. as a multiracial transgender woman of color, a transgender woman, a lot of men that date us are heterosexual identified. So they live, th their social life is heterosexual. They live in a, a straight world and they dabble over, they come over to our world to live out their fantasies. So a lot of the times, I mean, I would say 95% of the men that I've been with are straight men, like straight heterosexual identifying. They have girlfriends, they have wives, they have, you know, not that I intentionally am a home wrecker, uh, but yeah, I'm just saying that like they'll lie and they won't say they're married and shit like that. So a lot of times we're the secret. So I met this guy, we exchanged numbers. <laughs> Look at this one. <laughs> so we exchanged numbers and um, you know, we were talking back and forth, texting back and forth. So he invites me over to his house. So I said, well, why don't you come to my place? So he's like, oh, my car's broken down. Um, you know, I said, well, do you live alone? Because that's the first thing I asked, like, you know. So he's like, no, I, I, I have a roommate, a, a buddy of mine. We, we, um, we uh, share an apartment together. So I was like, are you sure it's okay? And does he know that you like my type? And, and he's like, he doesn't know, but he won't be there. He's, he'll be at work. So he convinces me to go over. And I, I, have a, I have like plenty of stories, honey, but this one kind of stands out. So I, I walk into the place and I'm looking around and I'm like, this don't seem like a bachelor pad to me, right? I'm like, wait a minute, it's, I'm, I'm picking up like, you know, um, female essence, woman, the essence of a woman. So I said, are you sure you live with your buddy? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, are you sure? He's like, don't worry about it, you know. We're, we're, no one's here. We're alone. So one thing leads to the other. We're, I end up in this bed. I'm completely naked. He's completely naked. We're doing the do. And he hears a noise. Well, we both hear a noise. So we stop. And I'm like, what? And he's like, oh, no, no, no. It's, it's okay. So we start again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then he hears, we hear footsteps and he's like, oh shit, my wife. I'm like, your wife, what the fuck? And I'm in his bed, okay? I jump up, I'm pulling my dress up. He's like, baby, I'm sorry, you gotta go out the window. I'm like, oh dear Lord. And thank God it was the first floor. And so I had to go out the window. He's giving me my bag. I'm running across the yard to get to my car. Oh my God. And, and you know, I, I can only say I've had an angel looking over me because, you know, a lot of times I don't plan or like intentionally try to get in these situations, but I've just found myself in them. And I think, God, there, there must have been angels looking over me because can you imagine if she had walked in and caught the two of us? Oh my God. I probably wouldn't be on this Southern Exposure show. <laughs> You'd have some other tranny Joseph on here. So let me hear your story, honey. Oh, sweetie. My, my story is much worse. That's for sure. Holy shit. Jesus Christ almighty. Um, I mean, back in the day, a long, long time ago, I worked as a... Um, phone person for um, an escort service. Oh, and okay. So you were doing phone sex. Okay. No, I wasn't doing phone sex. I was just basically scheduling the people to go do the sex. Oh, okay. Um, so long, this is a long time ago. Oh, that's and a real wholesome it, job. Right. It, it was a very wholesome job. It makes me feel quite proud that I did that way back then. 
Um, it's definitely something that I usually put on my Hallmark cards. Um, and uh, let's just say this, I mean, Konyo is correct. Um, um, I, I, one of the quote unquote customers, clients, whatever you call them, um, was really in the need for attention. And I knew what the person looked like um, and decided because the other person was not available that I would go help facilitate their needs. Their needs, yeah. <laughs> I was just being helpful. You were just being helpful, yeah. Help so, more. <laughs> yes, that's correct. You're not mistaken. Uh, this is like such a long time ago. This is like, oh my God, Jesus, Christmas, 25, 30 years ago. Oh my God, it's a long time ago. Oh, so, so, you, so you were a hot young Latin thing then, honey. You were a hot Puerto Rican thing. And they were, ha <laughs> caliente. <laughs> I, I was mucho caliente back then when I was in my 20, you were 20s. Um, you talk, now you're talking like you don't speak English when I was in my 20s. <laughs> when, I was in, when I was in my 20s, I was a hot number. Oh my God, stop it. You're killing me. Uh, so <laughs> You played the role. He wanted a nice Latin uh, foreigner and you went in and said, hola. <laughs> hola is correct. So as soon as I, I've never, I, all joking aside, I've never been an escort hooker. I don't know how to call it correctly. I don't know how to say it correctly. Because um, technically you go and you quote unquote spend time. Spend time. You don't. Make sure and get that money, honey, when you walk in the door, honey. Run me that. Run me that money, honey. <laughs> Ironically, that's the first thing that I did. Um, but technically you don't have sex. You just are together. And as soon as I walked in, I got the cash. Now there was no there not nothing happened. Nothing happened. That's the funny part. You were like this. Nothing happened. You're That's right. the funny part. So I I got naked and um their, their, their master bedroom was above the garage. And this, oh my God, Jesus, Christmas. This, this man was so beautiful. It was disgusting. Seriously. I'm like thinking in my, when I was a hot 20 year old boy, I'm thinking, what in the hell are you doing paying me? A hundred bucks to come and spend time with you. You're absolutely dropping it. Because Gorgeous. You were, a hot, you were a hot boy yourself, and he wanted you to lick him from head to toe. <laughs> well, none of that happened. That's the funny part. So, but <laughs> as soon as I got like unclothed, then the 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 garage door came up, and I was like, I like jumped back. I was like, what the hell? And then the guy was like, oh. That must be my partner coming home. I was like, holy shit, where am I going to go? I got to go downstairs. My car's out front. He's like, you got to jump out the window. That's the part that's funny. Because I jumped out the second floor window into a fucking shrub in the snow. Oh, my God. Oh my I'm God. not kidding you. So we both jumped out windows, my God. <laughs> well, mine was the second floor window. Yeah, honey, Yours is the first floor honey, window. I, I, honey, if I had jumped from the second floor, I would have probably busted these. Who knows? <laughs> I'm, and then I, 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 had to I had to run around the corner with my shoes hanging around my neck like an asshole. And then I had to run halfway down the street and jump in the car. And then as I'm pulling away, I'm looking in the rearview mirror and the husband or the boyfriend or whatever he was came running out, like looking up and down the street. Cause he obviously knew something was going on. I mean, this is such a long time ago. It's fucking ridiculous. It's, 
it's a ridiculous story. It's a ridiculous thing to even talk about. But because what you were talking about was like, oh, my God, I forgot about that. And then your story reminded me about what happened to me. And his boyfriend was absolutely dropped dead gorgeous, beautiful. Okay, I've heard that all day. <laughs> Pretty Ricky! <laughs> honey, you better, you better slow your roll, um, honey, Mr. Joseph, because when you get off this show, someone's going to get you. <laughs> it was a funny story. It's a funny story a long time ago. Make that ass of yours. <laughs> it's it's a funny story a long time ago, but your story reminded me about what happened to me when I was when I had the same kind of situation happen. Pretty Ricky. <laughs> it's funny, it's funny, and I do have a, I, I should say, Ricky <laughs> blesses me on a daily basis with his presence. None of you all have seen him. You've all heard about him. But he is the best person I've ever met. Aww. That's so you can hear him in the background. But he is the best person I've ever met on the face of the planet besides yourself, Roger. Oh, my goodness. Wow. No, seriously. Seriously, it's it's true. When I, when I say that, it's true. Because you and Ricky and myself, we all get it. There's not very many people who actually get life. So are we the trifecta? Apparently we might be. I mean, but the thing is like, we appreciate what we have. We want to improve. We want to help others. And every action that we do is trying to help perpetuate that on a daily basis. Yes. Every single thing that each one of us do every single day is trying to help other people and helping the other people actually makes us happy, not because of money, but because of it just makes us feel good. And I know it sounds, because you and I have had this discussion before about, about isn't, isn't helping people a reward like money. You and I have had this discussion before. It's not the same, but it's similar where there's like a reward. Like if, if you help somebody and it makes you feel good, and I help somebody and it makes me feel good. So that's a reward, technically. And that's, but that's not what our intention is. You do what you do and I do what I do. And Ricky does what he does. Each one of us do what we do because it's just the right thing to do. And I have no idea why I'm so blessed with Ricky. I have no idea. I put him through bullshit. Seriously. I'm quote unquote batshit crazy. Uh, uh, according to most people, I'm mean, I'm nasty. I'm hard to understand. People don't like me. Some people do. People who actually know me understand that what I do and say is because I love the person that I'm trying to communicate with. My intentions are good. But anyway, so I just want to say thank you so much once again, Raji. Um, and I want to say thank you. Thank you to everybody at home. And I'm going to leave it up to you to close the show. And then after you're done, I'll give my little two cents. Okay. So I just want to say thank you for sharing what you just did. And I think that would be a wonderful uh, thing to pivot off of in my closing. It's the beginning of the year, 2021. And so first of all, oh, look at that tongue go. First of all, we should be thankful for the blessings that we have. Joseph just expressed his gratefulness for pretty Ricky and myself. And so be thankful for the blessings that we have and connect with your purpose. What are you here to do? We all come to this planet 
for a divine reason. And we all have a gift that we bring to life and sometimes gifts, plural. So key into that and, you know, do something that fulfills you and that's going to fulfill your purpose. You're like divine life purpose because we all have that reason for being here. So on that note, I just want to wish everyone love, happiness, peace, good health, prosperity, many blessings, and a serendipitous, serendipitous, how's that for a fancy word, 2021. And I'll toss it over to Joseph. <laughs> Well, th thank you so much for that. And clearly, I agree with you, Raji. Um, if you want to get a hold of Raji, you can. Raji at mysouthernexposure.site. If you want to get a hold of me, Joseph at mysouthernexposure.site. If you want to work with us, that's work at mysouthernexposure.site. If you're interested in advertising, which would be kind of nice to get a little green goes in here that's advertised at my southern exposure dot site as well um i want to thank all of our more than well i should say close to ninety thousand viewers who have seen us together uh it's a blessing and i hope that everybody has a good martin luther king jr day we are both looking forward to, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna I, I know I'm gonna toss it back to you because I know you're gonna have something to say after I say this, Raji. I am so much looking forward to Wednesday. So this is such a big deal. We can't just skirt it off to the side and give a sidebar comment I mean, I took off all my jewelry, except for this necklace. That's the last one coming off. I was like, I got to get down to the really having Kamala Harris, first female vice president on the face of the United States. And she's multicultural, multicolor. And it's a woman. That's a fucking big deal. You can't you can't look at it sideways, no matter if you're Republican or Democrat or Episcopalian. This is such a big day for everybody on the planet because everyone looks at the United States as like a cornerstone. Like they look towards us as we're the one who set the precedence. And even though other countries have had female leadership, it's not the same as it happening here. It's never happened before. It's always been the white man's club. Guess what, boys? It's not the white man's club no more. No. Pack up your bags. You can go. I'm going to leave it to you to finish, Raji. And I want to say thank you to everybody at home. Well, I'll tell you, I mean... Um, yeah, what you just said, I mean, history is going to happen in less than two days. And we'll also have the first second man. <laughs> There's never been any of that either. The first second man. Oh my God, you know, Kamala's husband. So there you go. So I'm just praying that the inauguration will go off without a hitch and everyone will be safe and sound and there'll be a peaceful and loving transition of power this coming Wednesday. And um, on that note, I just want to wish everyone the best, and we'll see you next week. Bye! Bye! Bye!